Hi everybody, welcome to another Premier Guns video and today we're going to look at two of, without a doubt, our two best sellers and the comparison between the two even though they've got very very similar origins. Now when people come into the shop and they want to take up clay pigeon shooting the three um, main products that people ask for are Bretter Silver Pigeon, Browning 525 and Miracu MK38 because from a starter point of view if you want to go in at a certain level with one of those three big brands they are the guns that you will be looking at. So what we tend to look at is obviously the suitability and the fit but what a question that comes out quite often is what's the difference between the 525 and the Miracu MK38? Now the reason for that question is most people that have come into the shop done a bit of research say well I know they're made in the same factory so are they the same gun? So today I'm going to talk about Yes, they are made in the same factory, but they're not the same gun, and why I um, prefer one over the other, which we'll come to in a, in a little while. Bit of history, I'm sure most people know, Browning were responsible for inventing the over and under shotgun. Back in 1925, John Moses Browning came up with the, the superposed model, and the reason it was produced in Belgium is because although John Moses Browning was an American, he couldn't find anybody with the skill set to produce such a product. So therefore he moved production to Belgium. Uh, in the 1950s, 60s, um, Miraku was born in, the, um, in Japan. Well, I say 56, that's when it became popular. And it was basically, they were trying to do a Japanese copy of the Browning. So then you had, from, from, that, from that moment on, there was a little bit of competition because the Brownies were still handmade and built in Belgium to a very, very high standard, but the Miraku was a much more affordable product. So if you go back into the UK in the 1970s, uh, a company called Parker Hale used to bring in the Miracu, and um, at the time it was just unbelievably good value for money because it was great, great quality because it was Japanese made. So most of the, uh, most of the overruns are being produced at the time are coming out of Italy or, or Europe, you know, France, Spain, etc. And they just weren't as well built. That's a little tiny bit of history. So moving forward, Browning decided they wanted a piece of the, the Miracu market. So they then um, did a deal with them so they would produce guns for them under license with the Browning name on. So if you look at any uh, Miracu since 1977, 78, it will say on the bottom of it, BC Miracu, which is Brown Incorporation Miracu. So up to this day, they still produce very similar guns, but they, there are differences and that's what I want to talk about. So the 525 is without doubt one of the mainstays of the British shooter. Uh, been around since 2003, followed on from the 425, didn't change a lot, but it's still extremely well respected. Um, very popular. If you go to a clay shoot on a Sunday morning, the chances are you'll see, you won't just see one, you'll see half a dozen of them because they just work. Japanese build quality, supremely reliable, very, very durable, and in this case, very affordable. So we'll start off with the 525 and we'll talk about that and then we'll make a direct comparison to the Miracle MK38. So this is the latest model 525. So it's got the standard deep brown in action which everyone knows, everyone loves, because it's just got that real robust, solid feel about it. They haven't really changed for a number of years. I mean, this design goes back into the into the 1980s, um, and not much has changed since, because all they've done is that they've moved forward in terms of barrel boring, etc. And of course, now we're looking at a lead shot band, so steel shot proofing is, is all important. So the latest R55, this is the 2021 model, or 2022, and You've got the deep body action. This one is a coin finished action with a nice bit of scroll engraving. This one's 30 inch barrels. This is a sporting gun. We're talking about clay shooting gun today, so I'm only going to compare sporters rather than a game model. And as you'd expect with most brownies these days, the barrels are ventilated. It's uh, got a 10 mil top rib with a tram line and a center bead. And it's just standard sort of browning tackle. It just hasn't changed for a number of years. This one is Invector Plus Multi Choke, which they have been since 2010 stroke 11 on the 525. It's got an adjustable trigger, so you can move the trigger backwards to change the, the length of pull. But more importantly, if you've got someone that's maybe got shorter fingers, you can drop the trigger back, longer fingers, put the trigger forward. Um, 
grade two-ish, I think, European worn. This is quite a nicely figured one with the inflex recoil pad, um, which is good because you can change it. You can make, you can put a longer pad or shorter pad on. They do a spacer, three inch chamber, steel shot proof. It's just such a lot of gun for the money. And we get people coming into the shop and it's a question of, do I buy um, a, a lesser brand new shotgun, you know, something like an ATA or a betting Solly, etc., or should I go in now, go in deep, get the brown in? And my advice is always, ultimately it comes down to fit, but then it has to look at application and budget, and you're never gonna wear this thing out. It is that well made. We've got them here on the shooting ground. We use them as demos. I mean, they are out every single day of the week. The only slight, um, Criticism I would have with the with the Browning product is they are made of recycled steel, so they can go rusty a little bit. But you know, if your gun's going rusty, you're not looking after it properly, is, is my opinion. So this particular model, 30 inch, this is a right-handed gun, weighs seven pound twelve ounces. Now, for me, from a sporting gun point of view, it's a little bit light. I'd want a bit of extra weight, and because of that, if we look at the balance. There's not enough weight in the stock and it's a little bit barrel heavy, okay? So I always think of a 525 Sporter as more of an all-rounder rather than an out-and-out -out clay gun. That's just my personal opinion, that's not fact, that's how I feel. And that's what I will say to customers when they come into the shop, particularly when they're looking at something like the Miracu or the 525. Now, um, the 525 is as I said, it's synonymous with, with British clay shooters. It's extremely well regarded. We sell tons of them every year. They'll always be in the top 10 selling guns because they are just that popular. I'm not gonna use the word common, but they are everywhere, okay? And they've got to the point now whereby, you know, you, you know exactly what you're buying. Not a lot has changed because it just works so well. It's built to a price point to make affordable you know um, good range shotgun people starting off now this particular gun uh, Brownie have always boasted you get a three-year warranty on the gun and you get 10 years on the action frame in addition the Invector Plus multi chokes it's supplied with four you get a trigger lock you get this um, quite practical ABS case which now comes with a little choke box which is a, a new addition never used to so you've got your Invector multi chokes in here Invector Plus sorry with your choke key and an allen key to adjust the trigger and a little auto safety bar should you wish to take this thing game shooting and have it converted to auto safe. So that's the 525. You know, one word to sum it up would be is reliable, durable. And like I said, the key thing for me is it's a little bit light from a sporting point of view. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move on to the MK38 and I'm gonna tell you the differences and why I personally feel that the MK38 is a better gun for clays. So, at first glance, they look pretty similar, okay? The action and barrels are essentially the same. The rib is the same. What you will notice with the MK38 is it hasn't got ventilated barrels. No idea why that is. Miracu do manufacture guns for certainly the Australian market that I've seen and they have got ventilated barrels, but the models we get in the UK don't have them. Just to give you a little bit of history on the MK38, although we have done a video, so do check that out. Uh, launched in the UK in 1997, followed on from the very popular 3800 series, and this particular Teague model sporter came out in 2003. It literally has not changed since the day it came out. The only thing I can actually think of with the sporting version is they've gone from like a polyurethane lacquer finish on the stock to this sort of semi-satin oil finish, and that is it. Again, testament to the fact that these both these guns just work and they don't really need to be updated or changed because they are brilliant. So 30 inch same as the 525. Now not having that center rib does give you that extra bit of weight which I was talking about. Now this gun weighs eight pound one ounces and because of that it balances perfectly on the hinge pin. Okay the 525 doesn't it was a bit barrel heavy whereas that they've got it absolutely right perfectly on the pin and for me those extra four or five ounces makes the gun steadier smoother 
and more pointable. There's nothing wrong with the 525, but let's remember that the MK38 is an out and out clay buster. And if you want to shoot sporting clays, this is the gun I'm recommending. Okay, so you've got very, very similar features to the 525, adjustable trigger, Invector Plus multi chokes. This one does come with three extended teak chokes as well as the flush ones. And the stock dimensions are slightly, slightly different. There's just a little bit more wood in the comb. Um, it's got a slightly different recoil pad, which means you can't lengthen and shorten it accordingly as you can with the 525. This is a fixed pad and it's just a 15 mil solid rubber thing. Um, not really gonna absorb any recoil because it's basically the back end of a tire. However, that extra weight and that improved balance will mean that this is a smoother gun to shoot. Both of them have got backboard barrels, 740 and Vector Plus. So again, um, if you wanted to use bigger cartridges, and I know people that do shoot game with MK38s, MK38 grade five sporters, very, very popular with people that shoot tall pheasants. And again, because of those overboard barrels with bigger cartridges, it is a much more comfortable to shoot than some traditional game guns, which are probably nominal board, which ultimately will increase the valve recoil. Different finish on the stock, as you can see. So with the browning, it's got this um, this sort of oil finish, whereas the Miracu is like a semi-lacquer, it's almost like a glue on top of the stock. They both do the job absolutely fine. I would say this is probably better in all weather and would use um, would require a little bit less maintenance. Obviously with an oil finish stock, you should always care for it with something that's linseed, wax, oil-based, whatever. Uh, the top levers, look at them, they are identical. The finish of the action is identical. The engraving is slightly different, but you know, very, very similar. They've both got a Schnabel forend. They've both got double point checker in. Now this one, which is not necessarily a con, uh, this one, the Marut comes in a cardboard box. And that, from my point of view, is all down to politics. Browning went to Miraku for them to produce a product for them. They therefore see Miraku as the poorer cousin. If you buy a Miraku in the UK, even a grade five at three and a half grand plus, it will come in this absolutely dreadful cardboard box. But what you do get inside is, of course, you do get your multi chokes and you do get your little proof certificate from Japan and you do get your Teague choke key, which is a tapered key, because of course your Teague extended multi chokes uh, are a taper fit and they don't have any castellation done. So you get three Teagues, two flush chokes, and there's your choke key, which fits in there nicely. Okay, Teague, very respected choke manufacturer, well respected choke manufacturer, used all over the world by champions and uh, and club level shooters alike, so no problems with that. Um, but I suppose the big bugbear for me is, even though the Miracu comes in a cardboard box and uh, has less goodies with it, if you like, it's more money. But but it is a better gun for clay for, for sporting clay shooting, no question in my eyes. So people come in and they say, and the, they've seen the, the, um, the Browning adverts in the press, because again, you will not see a Miracu advert very, very rarely. You can't buy any merchandise because it is sewn up in the UK to the point that Browning want you to buy Brownings. My advice, and I'm being completely impartial here, but this is my opinion, don't buy the 525, buy the MK38 because it's a better gun for clay shooting. The extra bit of weight, the better balance, it's just a more forgiving gun and that's what I feel you want when you're looking for a clay gun. I've got another gun I'm going to show you here, which is another MK38 Sporter. But this has got the addition of a beaver tail forend. Beaver tail forends, as you know, I'm a huge fan of. I've got one on my personal DT11. Absolutely great bit of kit because I feel they offer a bit more control um, over the over the shotgun. So it's a wider forend with a groove to put your fingers in, like a beaver tail. And we actually carry MK38 Sporters in grade one and grade five with a beaver tail forend on. Um, there isn't really the option of that with the 525, so that's a that's a definite plus point for the MK38. And if you've got bigger hands and you like the feel of the trap gun, then this is the way forward. MK38 Sporter with a beaver tail forend. I think, to be fair, that probably covers everything. Um, like I said, these are, although they're direct competitors, they come out the same factory. They have a huge following, Miracle in particular in the UK, 
and a lot of it tends to be geographical so where we are here in the sort of the the east midlands the midlands area Miracle and Brownells are a massive, massive stronghold, producing very, very famous shooters uh, of years gone by. The likes of Joe Wheater won a lot of medals with a with a Browning trap gun in the um, in the 70s, I believe. I wasn't born, so I don't know. And um, if you are looking to get into clay shooting and you are looking at the sort of sub to the 1500 to 2000 pound category, which a lot of people are, you know, it's a conservative purchase, a considered purchase, sorry. It's a lot of money, you want to get it right, you want to be buying the right product. The 5T5, the Browning 5T5 Sporter 1 and the Miracle MK38 Sporter Teague should be on your list. Like I said, by all means, come down to the shooting ground, try both of them, we've got demos of both. But just from my experience point of view, if you want to shoot competition clay guns, for me, regardless of the politics, regardless it comes in this bloody awful cardboard box, buy the MK38. That's it from me. Any questions, please comment below, like and subscribe the channel. And um, one thing I'm going to say is if anyone's got a particular review they'd like to see of a gun, please you know, get in touch. You can email us, call us, whatever you need to do. And we'll be happy to try and assist in any way we can. If we can't get hold of the gun and you've got it, not a problem. We'll borrow it, we'll do a video. And then you've got an own personal bit of a, bit of a video experience for yourself. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon. Thanks.